Uh, good afternoon. It's a huge pleasure to be here today to tell you how everyone in this room can actually help me to save those new species of primates that I've discovered. And they're a wonderful group of primates called the slow lorises. And I want to introduce you to those primates because I've had the huge privilege to spend the last 20 years of my life studying these beautiful animals throughout Southeast Asia, from India through to Cambodia, to Borneo, all the way to the Philippines. They're nocturnal primates. They actually are cousins to us. They're related to the lemurs of Madagascar. They range from the size of a squirrel to about the size of a small cat. And there you see five of the, of the slow lorises. And I just want to tell you a little bit about some of the things I've learned about them over the last 20 years, because virtually nothing was known about them before I started studying them in the wild. First of all, why on earth are they called a slow loris? Well, one of the only things that's slow about them is that they give birth to tiny little babies that weigh about the weight of nine paper clips when they're born. And that takes them nearly seven months to do. So they have a, a, a birth period about the same as a human, despite the fact that this one weighs the weight of a cantaloupe. Uh, they're just like other primates and just like us. They have really strong so social relationships and they have really large brains, and they really love each other. They live in monogamous social units. They take care of their young. They really know their home ranges. And they are actually slow sometimes because they cannot leap. They have no tail, and they move through their home ranges, which are about the size of 5 to 30 football fields. And they do that through this elegant, beautiful locomotion, which you might have seen. Some people compare it to a ninja, and others use it to perfect their Tai Chi movements. <laughs> They're also a little bit weird. They have a wonderful long tongue that they use to dip into flowers to pollinate them. So they're important for the forest. They have a second tongue as well, which you see there. And the second tongue collects the pollen, and this is very important, and they also use it to clean beneath their teeth because they have a funny little uh, set of front teeth that's shaped like a comb, and it's called the tooth comb. And it looks a little bit strange, but it has many important functions. Not only do they use it for grooming, but they use it for gouging holes in trees. This little baby's only two months old, but you see some huge holes in the trees there that that baby's gouged, and it's its most important food, and it comprises up to 95% of its diet. The other thing that tooth comb is important for, if you didn't know, this cute, adorable little primate is the world's only venomous primate. And it's one of only six venomous mammals. And ooh, there you see the venom on its face. It actually combines some oil from its elbow with saliva in its mouth. And uh, you can see some saliva in Azka's face there. He's a very handsome boy. And, it can actually kill you and send you into anaphylactic shock, but what it's principally used for is despite the fact they like each other and have nice social relationships, they get into fights with their neighbors. And that's Azka again after he's been in a fight with his neighbor. So it causes necrosia, necrosis and flesh rot in other lorises. So they're very fascinating, and they're fascinating in lots of ways, and this is also a problem for slow lorises. Uh, slow lorises are all endangered. So they're endangered for three main purposes. And I do want to let you know that you will see some sad slides in this talk as well. And th these are the first of those. Slow lorises are used in traditional medicines throughout their range for 100 reasons. Ooh, everything's going wrong here. Uh, they're considered the animal that can cure 100 diseases. They're also quite cute to many people. So they're not only used as pets, but in tourist destinations, you could get a nice photograph taken with a slow loris. And this is actually causing them to go extinct because just like I said, they have a very long life history and their populations can't recover from this because they don't breed well in captivity. You may not know that, in fact, another huge threat to slow lorises comes from all of you, potentially, because of these reasons. Social media has had a huge impact on the slow loris. And it all started in 2009, when a little loris filmed in a flat in Russia became an internet sensation when it was filmed being tickled on a bed in a, in a Russian flat. This uh, video has now been seen by about 20 million people around the world. 
uh, a second film in 2011 of a little Loris holding a, a little cocktail umbrella, similarly went viral, seen by about four million people. It looks quite cute, but these animals are filmed in really inappropriate conditions, in bright daylight, they're illegal, they're illegally imported from, or they're illegally smuggled out of the forest, uh, and usually they are show, showing signs of obesity, signs of uh, injury, and other factors. But because they look cute, the average person can't tell this. When these videos started going viral, another interesting thing started to happen in the Web 2.0 community. They became the most viewed animal on Wikipedia. People wanted to know what a slow loris was, because many people wanted to buy one. And so Wikipedia started to inform people about slow lorises and just designed the first slow loris conservation page. And what you see here is a major truth about slow lorises, that in order to keep them as a pet, because they're venomous, the traders cut their teeth out in markets with nail clippers or wire cutters or other brutal means. There is no way to make a slow loris not venomous other than doing this, and it still doesn't actually do, do any good. Uh, the Wikipedia page reported other conservation issues as well, and hopefully was informing the public. It wasn't still quite enough, so in 2012, I made a film with a, with a small company in the UK, and this went out on Animal Planet around the world and on the BBC, and it showed brutal scenes of lorises in markets. And amazingly, despite some of these videos being on YouTube since 2009, particularly the tickling slow loris video, they'd refused to take it down, but a public outcry just became huge, and after three years, that video was removed. It still didn't end, <laughs> that's a great thing. It still had it ended, however, and the slow lorises keep ending up on YouTube. And this one you might have seen, it's the latest internet sensation, a slow loris eating sticky rice. And uh, I'll tell you a little bit more about that one later. It's not all sad, however, because what you see here uh, is a, a little image, a cartoon image. In 2012, we described three new species from Borneo. They were from museum specimens. We didn't even know if they still were alive in the wild. But using social networking, we were able to find photographs of those animals on Flickr and other social sharing sites. And we now know that those animals still are alive in the wild. So that's quite exciting. That social networking allows us to discover new species. So Web 2.0 is a very interesting way to find out about these animals. And I want to tell you today a little bit more about how the slow loris is a very interesting way to learn about wildlife trade. These are some of the sad pictures now. And this is the truth about where slow lorises come from. These are true scenes of the wildlife trade in Southeast Asia. Animals are traded openly. There is no policing of these markets. There's all sorts of reasons why this happens that are, so, that are socially constructed. But you can buy lizards and fish and other mammals and many birds, many of which are critically endangered or even extinct in the wild. And the loris is a very good representative of these species because you cannot breed them in captivity. Even the best zoos in the world have difficulty breeding them in captivity. So when we see them on YouTube, we're almost always certain they're wild animals. So um, what we wanted to do was look at that one video that was up for three years and removed by Wired.com after this public outcry, and just do a little analysis of it because it had nearly 10 million views. People loved this video. They thought it was the most amazing thing they'd ever seen. And it had nearly 13,000 comments. And we wanted to see, because there was a suggestion that it actually was helping slow lorises and increasing awareness about them. So first of all, I wanted to know who was actually watching these videos because it's really a, a cross-section of society just like you guys here. And in fact, it is a lot of Americans. North Americans were the highest number of viewers watching Slow Loris videos. Despite the fact that people from 174 countries watch these videos, very few were from the Slow Loris range countries. So it was uh, a lot of people outside where these animals potentially could be shipped to for pets. Both men and women watched them, and the average age was 25 to uh, 27 years old, so an affluent age range, which could potentially afford to buy slow loris pets, which once they get out of Indonesia or uh, Vietnam, costs about $3,000. Uh, 
And if we actually look at the hobbies that people actually self put onto YouTube, so everybody puts up their own profile, they weren't animal lovers, although 10% were animal lovers. They liked all sorts of things, particularly music, spelled every different possible way. Um, but uh, <laughs> anime, other sorts of things, reading was very popular. So a lot of interesting things that people like to do. So not just animal lovers watching Laura's videos. And here are the comments. We, we coded these nearly 13,000 comments and looked at what people thought. So just going through these very quickly, the number one comment was, I want one. And I want to show you from the beginning to the end of the video that what the percentages show is over time how many people still wanted one, no matter how much conservation information was pumped out into the world. And you can read the comments for yourself. But other uh, things that people said were how cute these animals were, how cute these videos were. And they couldn't see that this tickling slow loris video was actually an animal that was clinically obese. It had alopecia of its fur. It was on a terrible, it was sitting on a mattress with no natural substrate. It was a completely depressing video. And, and people really wanted to buy one. They started to become more aware they were venomous. Some people started to become aware of conservation. Uh, the Disney film Madagascar was very important. A lot of people said it looked like King Julian, and uh, that was quite an exciting comment. And uh, others suggested, in fact, that those, these loris as being pets was going to help their conservation status. I'm having a really hard time with my microphone. I apologize here. It's not staying on. And so here we have our King Julian comment. And a lot of people really believed they knew what the loris felt. So no matter what experts went on these videos and suggested things about what, what was happening, people thought the loris looked happy. So the loris was in fact in a defense posture that they wanted to bite the person and envenomate them, but people believed the loris looked happy. And they believed that there was a market for these videos that was gonna stop them from becoming extinct. And that it had a better life because it had food and no predators. So I like this one, I don't understand why this video is so sad. And then we started to get comments, why doesn't YouTube do something? Why doesn't YouTube put information like a cigarette pack saying that these videos are wrong? And after the Jungle Gremlins of Java came out, after this film came out saying this pet trade is really terrible, people said, I used to think this was cute, now I realize it is wrong and I feel very terrible. But if we actually look what really changed over time, we did see that there were some, uh, around 200 comments a month. Re interest in the video changed when this little Loris with an umbrella came out, also when this film came out. But people did know that Loris got their teeth ripped out, so that did significantly increase over time. People never knew they were venomous. People never knew they were uh, used in traditional medicines, despite this being the first and most important uh, trait listed on this Wikipedia conservation page. And although in the first six months people understood they were endangered, it was something that these videos never promoted. So these videos didn't increase conservation awareness. So should YouTube ban these videos? YouTube is a self-policed type of uh, social networking. And it does allow viewers to, to say these videos are animal cruelty. And are they cruel? And I must say, hundreds of people have said they were cruel. Lorises are arboreal animals. They like to hold on to, to branches. If you had a dog or a horse or a rabbit crammed into a tiny cage, you would say it was cruel, and YouTube would probably take it down. Lorises are nocturnal, and having bright white lights in their eyes actually can blind them, and they're terrified and miserable. If you showed this with your pet dog or your cat or your rabbit or even your hamster, it would probably be cruel, and YouTube would take it down. Lorises eat gum and nectar and insects. These videos show them eating popcorn and bananas and bread. That's going to kill them, give them diabetes, and make them very sick, but YouTube refuses to take it down. So is it animal cruelty? I don't know. What's next? Will YouTube take these down? Probably not. They make a lot of money from these videos. People get away with, with putting these videos up by saying they're from Laura's nurseries. They get these videos, they get these animals as domesticated animals. However, there are more YouTube videos of these lorises up than there have been bred lorises in zoos. So last year, 11 
lorises were born in all zoos in the entire world that are registered for, for in, in the zoo community. And there were 50 videos put up onto YouTube. So that tells you something about if these videos are legal, or if, these, if there are loris nurseries. It's much cheaper to get these animals from the wild, and most of these animals are coming from the wild. Are these videos legal? Lorises are protected in every country where they're found. It's illegal to keep them as pets. It's illegal to uh, send them out for the pet trade. They're protected under the Convention of International Trade of Endangered Species. And therefore, it is illegal to keep them as a pet if they are illegally smuggled into a country. So they must be legally brought into, say, United States, even if it's, if, even if it's illegal to even if it's legal to have primates, they must have legally been brought into the country in the first place. And the parents must legally have been brought into the country in the first place. YouTube currently does not have a function to mark animal videos as illegal. It has a function to mark weapons as illegal. It has a function to mark drugs as illegal. It has a function to mark pornography as illegal, but nothing to do with animals. So this is a huge gap in public policing of these videos. So what is next? What is the future? These lorises are actually representing all of these potentially endangered species that are being shown and paraded as pets. When people see these animals in the context of pets, they look beautiful and cute and adorable, but experts can't see their suffering. And so it's really your job to be able to be informed. These social networking sites should really be informing the public. They should be giving you the information you need to be able to self-police these videos. And they should be giving you the option to say whether these videos are illegal. And they should be listening to you when you flag them as animal cruelty. And they should take these videos down and allow these new species that have only just been discovered in the last 20 years to have the chance to survive before something as senseless as the pet trade sucks them to extinction. So thank you so much for listening. Thank you.